It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Um, all right. Uh, this next question is from Maxi. Maxi said, where should you place fixed income within the three bucket portfolio? Uh, bonds and REITs generally don't have the returns of the stock market, interesting, but you can get quite a bit more in dividends and coupons. So uh, for those of you that, that aren't familiar, we talk about this three bucket strategy where when you get to retirement, you want to have three different tax buckets. You want to have your tax deferred, that's like your 401ks, your IRAs, your tax free, that's your Roths and HSAs, and then your after tax or currently taxable, that's just like a regular uh, brokerage type account. And so Max, he's saying, all right, well, I don't think that bonds and REITs, real estate investments, perform as well as the stock market. Where's the best place to hold those? Uh, not, not from an asset allocation, how much of it to hold, but from an asset location, where to put it. Well, I think it changes. I mean, Maxi, not to turn a complex situ- tax question into a more complex, but I, I will do it. I mean, it's um, because I think that this is why financial planners, we, we don't get outgrown or become obsolete is because there's always going to be a need for this, is that while you're in the accumulation stage, meaning you don't plan on touching these assets, they're just growing and piling up in the background for the thought that down the road you will need it mm-hmm. in the decumulation stage, I want it to be very tax efficient. So with things like bonds, when they become, you know, you have to have them, but you're worried about the taxes because they generate everything, every part of the income that a bond generates uh, on the coupons and so forth is going to be ordinary income taxes, Mm -hmm. which is a higher rate. Um, I want that in a tax deferred account. I want that in a traditional tax deferred. But here's the problem. When you retire and enter decumulation stage, meaning you're gone from saver to now spender, you're going to want the you access want to that, that money as yeah. soon as possible. So there potentially could be a transition point where your bucket strategy actually changes depending upon whether you're an accumulator versus a spender of mm-hmm. your resources. That's the great thing about the complexity of this is that there will be transitions there. Same thing with REITs. I mean, there, there's going to be potential that depending upon where you are in your stage of life financially – where you want to defer the income that's being paid out on that versus if you want to have it where it's easily accessible. Those things are always going to be slightly in conflict with each other. So that's why it's smart to address it with a plan in the hyperaccumulation step seven of the financial order of operations. And it will be customized to every person, pimp on what's going on in your financial life. Now, I'm always amazed, and this is really an interesting thing. So we talk about asset allocation and then specifically asset location on the show all the time. I'm always amazed when, uh, when we have a brand new client come to the firm and we'll do an analysis of their current portfolio and then we'll look at it side by side with their last year's tax return. And we're always amazed when we uncover for them, hey, you, really, you know that thing we talk about on the show where we talked about where you have, this is an exact, uh, an exact representation of why that's valuable. Do you realize if we just don't hold that in this account and shift it over to this account, it will remove twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars of income from your tax return every year, and their minds are kind of blown away. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're in the normal daily course of going to your job and taking care of your family and doing all this, it's really easy for some of that financial stuff to fall on the back burner, right? Uh, how many times do we normally think about asset location? Maybe not as often as we should. So if you are getting to the point where the income that your portfolio is generating every year is sort of meaningful and impactful on your tax return. One, you should review your asset location, but two, that might be a really clear and obvious sign. Maybe it's time for me to take the relationship to the next level. Maybe I should think about having someone step in to help me to focus on these types of things when I don't have the margin or capacity to focus on them the way that I once did. Sure. 